What a disgrace. The mainstream media in this country is an absolute disgrace. Breaking news, the American media is nothing but propaganda. I don't know about you guys, but when someone is the victim of a crime or an attack and everyone is trying to figure out who to blame, the one person I am not going to blame is the victim. And I'm talking about real victims here. I'm not talking about professional victims like pretend NFL analyst Mina Kimes or the pretend victims who pretend to be basketball players in the WNBA. If someone breaks into your house and they steal your couch, I'm not going to blame you for failing to anchor the couch to the floor. I'm going to blame the doofus who broke into your home. The American media, they have professionalized the art of victimization. The media will create victims where they don't even exist. For example, Tyreek Hill is pulled over by police for reckless driving. Now, my inside sources tell me Tyreek Hill, he was in a hurry last Sunday because he was trying to get to Club Shay Shay to hold the camera to film Shay's escapades with his new Bay Ray. But the cops, they pulled Tyreek Hill over for doing a thousand miles an hour in a five mile an hour zone. Initially, Tyreek Hill is very combative. He is refusing to cooperate. He keeps rolling up his tinted windows. Now, most normal people, we looked at Tyreek Hill as the perpetrator. Not the mainstream media, though. No, 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 no! Tyreek Hill can't be the perpetrator. He checks too many woke boxes. According to the media, Tyreek Hill was the ultimate victim. The media loves, I mean they love, to create and celebrate victims. Unless, of course, the victim's name is Audrey Bad. <laughs> if you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter at KC underscore BTL84. Link to the second channel in the description below. Thank you guys for supporting the second channel. Within the first week of launching the second channel, we were able to meet YouTube's qualifications for monetization. Now, when I launched the main channel here, it took me, I think, 18 months to get monetized. Though, so thanks for your support. We were able to get the second channel qualified in just seven days. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. Last week, one of my longtime viewers, he copied me on an email that he was sending to the New York Times. The subject line of the email read, Bill O'Reilly finally tells the truth about Obama, proving that most cable news is propaganda. Last night, Bill O'Reilly, he sat down with some dude named Leland Vittert on News Nation. Now, this was surprising for a couple of reasons. Number one, I didn't know there were other people working at News Nation besides Chris Cuomo. Hey, it's me, Chrissy C. I didn't know News Nation could afford to hire other journalists. I thought they aired an hour of Chris Cuomo every night in prime time and the other 23 hours of the day were filled with reruns of The Brady Bunch. But the main reason that this was surprising is because of what Bill O'Reilly said about Barry the Obama. If you're under the age of 30 or maybe 25, I'm sure you're asking, who in the hell is Billy Riley? For 20 or so years, Bill O'Reilly hosted the number one show in cable news. Hell, he might have hosted the number one show on cable, period. He was working at Fox News, Bill O'Reilly. He was brutal with his criticisms of Barry Obama. Eight years ago, when Barry was handing the keys to the White House to the Trumper, Bill O'Reilly called his presidency a disaster, claimed that Obama was one of the weakest presidents in history. Last night, when he was talking to Leland Vittert and the handful of people watching his show on News Nation, also known as the Vittert family, Bill O'Reilly claimed that Barry Obama was the hardest working president in modern history and that he didn't think that he was damaging to the country. Now, whether you agree with Bill O'Reilly or not, that's not the point. What his comments prove is something that most of us have known all along. Cable news, the mainstream media, it's all 
Bullshit. It is nothing but propaganda. When he was cashing checks from Fox News, Obama was the devil. When he is talking to the Vittert family at News Nation, oh, you know, Barry wasn't so bad. Me and Barry have a great relationship. He's my tag team partner when we are playing against Johnny B. Biden in Dungeons and Dragons. I'm sure all of you guys know by now that there was another attempt on the Trumper yesterday afternoon. You know, it's getting harder and harder for me to believe that the Secret Service is this incompetent. How in the hell can there be two attacks on a former president in the past two months? This doofus yesterday, he was within a few hundred yards of the Trumper. How? How can that happen? I thought the Secret Service was the elite of the elite. I thought these were supposed to be some of the best agents in the country. And look, the field agents, the field agents yesterday were phenomenal again. According to the Trumper himself, the agents that were closest to him, they diffused the situation with a quickness. When I talk about the incompetence, I'm not talking about the Secret Service agents in the field. I'm talking about the decision makers. I was notified about the attack on the Trumper. I think it was during the first half of the Saints' demolition of the most overrated, overpaid quarterback in the NFL. When things like this happen, one of the first questions that you ask is, who is to blame? Who is at fault? Now, naturally, most people are going to blame the attacker. But beyond that, you might blame the Secret Service. You might blame the people running the country. The choice is are endless. The one person most people are not going to blame is the victim, which in this case is Donald Trump. I mean, seriously, how in the hell could you possibly blame the Trumper? How would you justify it? Well, KC, it is so obvious that this is Trump's fault. He was playing golf yesterday and it was Sunday. This is a blatant violation of the woke commandments. Remember the Sabbath and do absolutely nothing that day, just like the other six days of the week. Us normal people, whether you agree with him politically or not, you are not going to blame the Trumper for his own attack. Because we don't practice the fine art of shit fuckery. Unfortunately, I can't say the same for the wanker spankers in the mainstream media. I'm gonna show you two clips. One is of Lester Holt from NBC News, which aired several hours after the attack. The other clip. It features two unknown women collecting woke welfare from MSNBC. Now, in the past, I would have to tell you guys to pay very close attention because the media, they would be very subtle in what they were trying to do. But yesterday, there was no subtlety. Like I told you guys last week, the masks have been removed. The media is no longer afraid to show you exactly who they are. Watch for yourself. Today's apparent assassination attempt comes amid increasingly fierce rhetoric on the campaign trail itself. Mr. Trump, his running mate J.D. Vance, continue to make baseless claims about Haitian immigrants in Ohio. Do you expect to hear anything from the Trump campaign about toning down the rhetoric, toning down the violence, or would that be atypical of uh, the former president? Um, what? Excuse me? Let me make sure I'm understanding this correctly. NBC wants me to believe that so-called rhetoric from Trump and James Vance could be responsible for what happened yesterday? NBC wants me to believe that J.D. Vance talking about the Haitians' love of Garfield could be the reason Trump was attacked yesterday? One of the unknown women from MSNBC, she openly wondered if this would cause Donald Trump to tone down the violence. What violence? Someone please explain to me what violence she is talking about. Give me one example of Donald Trump or J.D. Vance or anyone associated with their campaign inciting violence. Well, KC, what about the heinous, barbaric attack on January 6th? Oh, I'm still traumatized by the events of that dangerous day. (laughs) 
Well, that is exactly what CBS wanted you to focus on last night. At least Chester Holt and the unknowns at MSNBC were talking about what happened yesterday. At least NBC was focused on current events. Can't say the same for CBS. Had to flip over to CBS from NFL Red Zone to watch the end of Bengals Chiefs last night. Harrison Butker kicks the game-winning field goal, moving the Chiefs to 2-0 on the season, which was fine with me because I had Bengals plus 7. Harrison Butker kicks another game winner. Patrick Mahomes is running onto the field to celebrate. Kelsey Swiffer prances onto the field looking for his future financial provider. Tay Tay, Jim Nance, and Tony Romo, they end the broadcast, and CBS goes straight into the season premiere of 60 Minutes, which was news to me because I didn't know that 60 Minutes was still on the air. I got up from my recliner to go into the kitchen to prep the hamburgers that I was grilling for dinner. I left the TV on CBS because I was thinking I figured they would be talking about the attack on the Trumper. <laughs> What was the leading story last night on 60 Minutes? January 6th, something that happened almost four years ago. But KC, 60 Minutes is pre-taped. It doesn't air live. Yeah, no shit. But here's the thing. CBS had, what, five, maybe six hours to put something together? They had five or six hours to figure this out. And in that time... They still made the decision to do an investigative report on January 6th? Let's just assume for a second that Donald Trump was not attacked yesterday. For one second, let's just pretend that it never happened. Why in the hell would CBS broadcast a report on January 6th for the season premiere of 60 Minutes? That damn day has been relentlessly covered for almost four years now. What the hell was the point of it? I mean, you mean to tell me 60 Minutes they couldn't find anything else to talk about? The media in this country is so disgraceful. I mean, these people are absolutely shameless. This is pure speculation on my part, but I think the reason that the media covered this attack the way they did yesterday, they do not want Donald Trump to benefit from it. They don't want this to affect the polls. Their only focus right now getting Cam Harris elected. But give me your thoughts on this. NBC News essentially blames the Trumper for his own attack. CBS, they decide to cover January 6th instead of breaking news involving Donald Trump. Is it any wonder why there is no trust in the American media? Seems like they will do anything to tarnish Donald Trump. This dude goes through his second attack in two months and the media either blames him or they want to talk about January 6th. Give me your thoughts on it. Sound off in the comments below. Like, subscribe, share the video. Appreciate your support. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com and I'll see you guys later.